Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you are listening and watching a brand new episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And joining me as always are my co-hosts, Rebellious D and Trav the Trash Man Martin. How you fellas doing today? I'm here. Ready to rock, brother. Hey, it is Trash always- Man. I like that nickname, man. Hey, that's cool. That's what, that's yeah. what hey, he always yeah. be trashing stuff. And, uh, you know, this is the spooky season here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And joining us is... Uh, amazing actor very very tall i met this guy in person (laughs) and uh when i saw him i was just like yo i mean i've seen him in house of a thousand corpses and he was tall in that but actually seeing him in person it's like this man he's huge that's what she said and that is mr (laughs) robert i wish (laughs) <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey man uh i like the setup there man you guys got the, the goods in the background and shit and you're into the yeah, biz man. and that's cool man i sometimes i i turn down podcasts uh I, as my man knows mm-hmm. but uh uh, uh I, I was intrigued with this uh presentation and decided to do this and uh looks like you guys are in the game pretty good back there hey thank you thank you <laughs> thank and, you sir uh, and just to let everybody know who the man is himself who is talking, it is Mr. Robert Allen Mukes. And see, Robert, it's like a tribe called Quest. I got to say the full thing, man. I can't right. just say Rob. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You can't just <laughs> say Rob. You can't just yeah. say Rob. So before we get into today's interview, make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to the channel, and you hit that bell button so that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And D, like you always say. Podcast in the description. Like, follow, subscribe, and thank you for watching. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So, Rob, uh, the first thing that we always ask all of our guests here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks is, what is your origin story? Everybody has one, and, uh, you know, everybody that's a origin story, uh, they're either a hero or a villain. I butchered it. I butchered it. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. That's What's an origin stuff. story? Like, my mother and father jumped on top of each other uh, 58 <laughs> years ago <laughs> in Indiana. <laughs> In Indiana. Uh, Indiana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where I'm from, brother. Uh, right. uh, I was born and raised there in Indianapolis, and um, I was a basketball dude. And uh, how the acting came about is is uh, it was kind of like, you know, I bumped into it by accident. Mm. Uh, I played in the summer basketball leagues in Los Angeles to get my European contracts, right? Mm-hmm. And so I did five years of Europe basketball. You know, I used to get in trouble in college, so I didn't really get a chance to make it to the big leagues. So uh, playing out here in L.A. and just vibing with cool dudes and, and L.A. dudes, L.A. cats, uh, a couple of buddies of mine started telling me about commercials, multiple people. Mm-hmm. And and I, and I got tired of hearing it. Like you know, I'm, I'm I'm like you know, that's from Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, right? Like <laughs> I I, didn't, I ain't playing like that, right? They don't want me like that. And and so uh, uh, damn, that light is horrible, man. I got to get a, a light in front of me. But anyway, um, I can see myself in that little third is. That's better. Uh, so um, uh, so my friend said, yeah, no commercials, man. They don't want you. I'm like, and, and so I didn't really take any any heart to it. I didn't take him serious. And then one day I saw this dude uh, eating a big a Big Mac on a Burger King commercial. <laughs> and there was a couple things that went through my mind. Like, you know, I'm like, I look better than that motherfucker, right? He was a ugly <laughs> motherfucker. And I'm like, I can I can play better because I know him from the summer leagues. I'm like, I could outball him and my woman looks better. So I'm, I'm like, I, I got all of these factors going. How did he do that? Mm-hmm. So... The next time I saw my guys, I was like, man, Steve's got a commercial. Did y'all see that shit? That blah, 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 blah. Yeah, man, I told you. That's what I'm telling you about. I was like, oh, okay. And then uh, uh, and then, so I, I did that. I tried out for commercials, and, and I think I got my third one, a Nike commercial. And it was big, man. I was playing defense against Spud Webb or whatever, right? Nice. Oh, and yeah. uh, uh, so I wasn't the main dude, but I was in there for long enough to get the money. So I thought, shit, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> this yes, is cool. Sir. So I did that for like six months and then I was dating this actress chick out here and then she was like, you know, you could be an actor. I'm like, yeah, nah, that ain't really, that ain't, you know, that ain't gonna happen for me. And then I I was lifting weights trying to, you know, get my body heavier for basketball, whatever, get in shape and, and I didn't get picked up that season, the next season for Europe. I was sitting out for more money, whatever. That, that's happened to me a few times. Mm-hmm. So 
I'm, my, I'm starting to kind of rebel out a little bit. I'm letting my hair grow long and, and my facial hair grow in a little bit. And, and then I saw this dude on a, on a uh, like, you know, you see Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll be back. And so my, I was starting to get a little buff and, mm-hmm. and everything. And I'm like, babe, I kind of look like the dude, you know. And she's like, yeah. And then there's this Dolph Lundgren. He had this movie Red Scorpion or something. Yeah. But he didn't say shit. He's just walking around with a club and in, 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 in this in the desert or something. And it was super simple. I'm like, I think I I think I could do that. It'd be a character dude. So I started growing my hair long, lifting weights. And uh uh there's this Don Gibb dude from First Blood. I'm like, yeah, that you know, I, I can I can I can definitely hang with his style of acting and uh and I got lucky and that was it, man. I, I started uh 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 going for acting more serious than just commercials nice, nice. so that's kind of like the origin of, of it all of getting lucky enough to to be in the cult classic house of a thousand corpses mm-hmm. right. yeah no I, I like that origin story and that's one of the things that i love about asking them is because for one a lot of our guests they don't expect us to ask like you know what the origin story is like how you got into you know, acting or when we interview voice actors and stuff like that. So it was cool hearing that and cool hearing that, you know, you were playing basketball. Yeah, you're welcome. Now, you know, something that I wanted to touch on is when I I met you in person, you know, I had told you that I was a professional wrestler. And when I was doing my research on you, I saw that you, uh, you know, put your foot in the wrestling ring. So do you? uh, I I did. Yeah. Like, let's talk about that a little bit. So like, how was it getting in the ring and, you know, entering the world of professional wrestling? It was painful, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> a lot of people say it's like fake, but uh, like when you fall on the ground, you do the bumps is real. And that, yeah. the mat flexes a little bit, but not enough to, it's not a pillow or a bed or anything. So uh, so who, who did big back then? I mean, uh, The Rock wasn't rolling yet. It was some, I saw a couple of actors making, uh, wrestlers making on TV and I was still fairly agile from, uh, from basketball. So I said, you know what, what the heck, Kevin Nash, or whatever, they're, they're making millions of dollars. I'm like, it, it looks fairly simple or whatever. And, and so I, I went, I went to the same school as prototype. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Cena. Cena, nice. Yeah. Wow. That's Steroid, awesome. Cena. Steroid boy Cena was down there. And, and unfortunately I, I never tried that because, or fortunately I never tried that because that really affects your body aggressively as you mature. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I wasn't doing that. So I wasn't really beefing up like that. And and I, although I was exhausting from just exhausted from just the wrestling school, throwing my body on the ground and everything, but uh, uh, I broke my thumb. Uh, this Aaron Baker body guy did bodyguard uh, bodybuilder dude didn't duck enough on his. I slung him against the rope and he came back. He was supposed to duck, and I swing above his head and he didn't duck hard enough. And I broke my thumb and I booked two rolls. Mm as I was getting my cast put on. And I was like, dang, that's that's cool. So a commercial and a little independent movie. And they let me shoot the commercial and the movie with my cast on. It was kind of cool. I got a black cast and everything. Mm -hmm. And so I came back from that injury a couple months later. And uh, the first practice, I did this big, this big drop over this dude's back. And my, and I didn't, my feet hit before my back did. And my Mm -hmm. back, I compressed my spinal cord a little bit. I could feel electricity go through my back. So that's shit. I couldn't feel my legs for a few minutes, and laying there, I'm thinking, "Dang, this could be it, right?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I ain't yeah, even making it. Scary as hell. Yeah, Hell uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, wrestling's no I, joke, I was rolling with commercials and shit, and I was making a living. I'm like, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull off this million dollar. Uh, uh, as I'm laying there, with the dudes wiggling uh-huh. my legs and shit. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull this off. So I had to go to a chiropractor for a year to, to get it out and everything. And 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 back in the day, people could like twist their necks and make their neck pop. And I thought that was strange. But n- now I can do that. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you kind of pop your knuckles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some people can do that with their neck. I couldn't yeah. do that until now, until after wrestling. Mm, so that's crazy. I, I, I just wasn't built for that, man. I, 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 did, I couldn't aim. No, man, I'll tell you, man, it's it's serious. Like people like they say that wrestling is fake and everything. And I say that us as wrestlers, we are uh, we are professional stuntmen. You know what I'm saying? That's and, it. Precisely. Uh, you know, the stunt I've never guys shared, get hurt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've never shared this story before, but I'll share it now since we're in the spooky season. And you were talking about your injury when you uh, got into the ring and you were training. But when I first started wrestling, 
we were practicing schoolboy roll-up pins and i was in the ring with this guy and he kept on messing up and you know when it comes to wrestling it's just like you got to keep on trying until you get it so right he goes for it a third time and when i come falling back like his whole knee goes up my ass and oh, no fun. And bro, like I swear for like the next three months after that, like it was hard for me to sit down. It was hard for so me to weird. sit down. You felt weird. It's like it's like it hurt when I pooped. And I was just like, bro, oh, like this is Damn. like this is the most pain that I've ever been in. And it's like I didn't know what to do to fit. All I ate, I just kept eating bananas and taking uh Advil. And I thought, wow. Wow. taking Advil. Hey, eventually I was able to, you know, do things again. Take but, it off. Yeah. Hey, take it hey, I Ooh, took I well, took it. I took it all. You know? Hey, he had a big knee too. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Hey, yeah, well, this hopefully is, that, didn't, that didn't affect your uh, sexuality. No, it did not. I yeah, okay, I am I am still good, but no, but it was uh it was crazy. It was a crazy time yeah. and uh I, I I honestly thought that I was never gonna be able to sit down normally again. But, right, uh, right, right, but, uh, right. You know, thank God, Jeez. thank God that you know my body healed, and that's what my happened. Body right. <laughs> my body healed. Your body healed. Your body healed, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, those uh, guys, those guys, you know, top respect to them. They, you know, they pay the price for uh, for the fame. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, they cheat, and and ninety percent of them probably have done steroids or whatever. And, and you know, I, I I think that's you know, it's kind of unfair, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, unless everyone's able to do it, but then so it goes against your body so hard that I never did that. Although, although I have done drinking and drugs and shit that goes against my body, but uh, uh, more power to them. And, and, and I, it's top respect to throw your body around for, for entertainment, man. It's, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you, and, and boxing and football as well. Rugby. Oh, yeah. like those, those dudes are putting in some, some hey, serious things. For entertain football, NFL football too, man. For, yeah, for, man. for the money, mm -hmm. that's a that's a tough, tough business, you know. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to piggyback off of what you were saying about the steroid thing, because I know me and you, when I had met you at the horror convention, um, we talked about like getting in the gym, you know, getting the peaks on mm -hmm. top of peaks. You know, if mm -hmm. it was easy, everybody would be doing it. You know what I'm saying? Precisely. I, I agree with you when you mentioned, you know, when you take steroids, it's like you're cheating, you're cutting corners because I mean, like you saw, like back in the day, I I think it was either Sammy, so not, not Sammy Sosa. Uh, I think it was Mark McGuire. It was Mark because, McGuire. Because remember, it's just like you know when they found out that he had taken steroids, like they took all his awards away. And yep. then like after he continued to play, he wasn't the same because he wasn't on the juice anymore. So like those the are the, those are the, hey like hey that's what they call it in the wrestling the business. OJ. They call it the juice. And that ain't all the place. A lot of play. You know, I didn't play baseball. Uh, you know, basketball is completely different, but I, I, you know, they say, well, it doesn't affect your swing, but I, I think you could probably have a little bit of an advantage if, if you got the juice in you, you know, your reflexes, your reflexes might just be a half a tenth of a second quicker than there, than the ball's going mm -hmm. 20 more yards. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's too bad that he did that. And, and, and when he got off of it, it he lost it, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah, it is what it is. I like Pete Rose, man, going on baseball and the mm -hmm. guys getting pushed down. I heard he never betted against, I mean, to lose, he betted it to, he bet to win. Like I'm going to, mm -hmm. we're going to beat that team. Right. So I, I hate that they pushed them out because yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that that's 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 legit there, you know. Not you know, it's not like he threw games. Yeah, he no, bet that he was gonna he, he yeah, bet, he bet that, that he was win. gonna whoop their ass. That's yeah. like like what's the problem with that? Like they should let him in by now. Man, yeah. and uh I'm not a huge baseball fan, but definitely, you know, it's playoff season now, so now I am focused in on yeah, MLB good, playoff. Good. But when Pete got in, reinstated a couple years back, he was oh, on he the MLB. Yeah. yeah, he was on the MLB channel, and he was up there with um, Alex Rodriguez and right. somebody else, and he was talking like, you know, swinging like, um, like the basics. I forgot what that word is, man. You know, like the basic right. stuff that you're learning, uh -huh. and they was the all like. Dude, they was blown away by the knowledge Pete Rose was dropping on them. Yeah, and these guys mm -hmm. are also Hall of Famers. Mm -hmm, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So they was like, man, this guy's dropping knowledge that we ain't even know. So Pete Rose, man, he, 
it, he, it's he a shame. A it's a shame. Also, how in Indiana, we didn't have a baseball team. We still don't have a professional baseball team. So Cincinnati mm -hmm. is the next closest city, probably like 130 miles away. So typically from my, you know, Indiana, people were fans of uh, Cincinnati and, and, uh, and the Reds. And so when I was a little boy, he was, he was the boss. He was the boss big time diving in for first base and shit. Yeah, That's a hero right there for you. Hey, he's still holding them records. So they, they still yeah, can't talk to boy. Right, right, right. Good. So that, yeah, that's wild, man. But, um, <laughs> I was going to say, man, I, you know, I love when you, cause you know, Banks met you, right? So Banks talked to you and, you know, uh -huh. me and D, you know, we really didn't know what we was in for, but you know, you rolled up in here, you know, swag was on a thousand, you <laughs> know, people and, say that. People say yeah. That. And I was just <laughs> like, all right, man, this dude's smooth as, <laughs> smooth as hell. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I'm kind of lazy, man. I, I went downstairs. It's hot. It's hot. So I, I went downstairs and threw on a white beater. But I was almost going to do it without my shirt on. I'm like, let me stop being lazy. And, but I've heard, I've heard that. I, I was raised in the inner city, and, and I used to admire dudes with, you know, uh, the, the pimp type of posture right. and everything. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, okay. I inherited that a little bit uh, uh, from my youth, you know. It's a cool style. The bling style is cool. Although I can't afford it with two daughters, uh, one playing volleyball, they hitting me for 10 G's a year. And I think this year it might be a little bit more. We're supposed to travel, man. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about they Philadelphia. We live in LA. That's like, you know, that's that's going to be another two wax on top of the 10. So I'm yeah. like, damn it. But she's she's cold. We're looking at a big scholarship. So it's, it's all good. You do for your kids, mm -hmm. right? Hell yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Congratulations, by yeah, the way. Big, big, super, super, super lucky, man. And then my big one, she uh, she didn't want to move her feet that quick. My, I, got, I got two girls. And uh, so she went heavy on the academics. And we got a 4.6. She's shooting for a 5.0, doing all the uh, volunteer work for the uh, National Honor Society. So Nice. Uh, See, that's got, how far ahead she is of me. I didn't even know you could yeah. go past four. You know, yeah, I, mean, I, know, I didn't even know thing. it was possible. I don't know when that started because I was lucky to get a 2.0 to stay on the basketball on the court. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I had to, the teachers had to let me slide. I'm like, one teacher tried to give me an F in English. I'm like, hold up. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 you like, you, I saw you at the game, but you know, I got, I need to, I need to D, you know? Yeah, and you then gotta my, have a my auto mechanics teacher tried to give me a B. I'm like, hold up, hold up, chief, man. No, 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 no. I got to have an A in this class so it can balance out. We need a 2.0. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was able to, uh, make that happen. But, uh, yeah, so I, I'm not academ academically driven at all. Uh, but, but I made <laughs> sure my kids, I made sure my kids got that right. going. So it's all That's good. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Hey, yeah. and, uh, I'll go ahead and you know, no, I was going to say it's not really horror related, but I definitely wanted to bring up a throwback for um, we saw that you was on the Parenthood. And oh, that was a good show, man. Good yeah, show. Was, man. We had we had Ken Michaels on the podcast, you know, and he was telling oh, yeah. us all these stories on set. And I don't do you remember anything from these times, man? I have a couple of stories to, to uh, share with you guys about that show. Hey, uh, floor is yours. so thank you, sir. So, um, you know, being raised in the inner city, as I stated, uh, there was a show that I liked it, that uh, Robert Townsend did called, he did an independent movie called, uh, uh, damn, his first movie what was the name of it. They had whole cakes on in it and this, that, and the other. Was it the dancing was, movie? No, no, no. I he, he, it up real quick. He, he, yeah, he, he put like 20 G's on his credit cards. He did this uh, exploitation movie and it was super popular. And uh, so his character name was Bobby and Bobby was trying to be an actor. And he would oh, yeah, go to Hollywood these, uh, Shuffle. Uh, yeah. Hollywood, yep. Is that it? Yeah, yep. Hollywood, Hollywood Shuffle. Shuffle. I, that was one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite movies from back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I liked how, you know, in the movie he, he struggled with, with, not wanting to be the dude where you because he was an actor and he was getting roles but he always had to play like you know sugar bear or whatever from uh <laughs> smoky yeah, bear yeah. from uh starsky and hutch uh -huh. so he got tired his grandmother was talking shit on him about doing that so uh uh there was a couple of things that happened to me in hollywood like you know when he would audition for it his buddy was like oh, hey, i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna do that and then he uh uh he got a role where he had to do that and his grandma came to the set and so he backed out of it 
And then uh, the dude that was the extra that was like, I'm not going to, I wouldn't do that. I wasn't going to do that. I wouldn't do that. Jumped up and said, I'll do it. And uh, that's happened to me a few times. And then, uh, uh, so I really liked that movie. And I, and I, and it was one of my favorite movies back in the day. So um, that was my first speaking role. So I, I booked it or whatever. I had a couple of little lines. I'm a doorman. And the, the casting director knew me from this, uh, this uh, uh, restaurant turned into a cabaret at night which I did pretty well there um, financially. Uh, he, he booked me on it and I was just playing myself, right? So mm -hmm. I never, I didn't meet him until we did rehearsals and he was on the other side of the door. So I didn't even get the chance to shake his hand or say anything to get over all the, how much I like that movie type of thing. I'm a right. fan of his. Mm -hmm. So the door opened to do the rehearsal and uh, the studio was there. We're doing blocking for the studios and the cameras <laughs> and the door opened and he was there. And I couldn't talk. <laughs> so, I you know like, that feeling. Uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, he said, somebody get him a PA and go rehearse with him. <laughs> but let's go to the next one. <laughs> I was he, he left me there for like 10 seconds trying to say something, man. And uh, yeah, dude, yeah. So obviously I went to the back. I shook it off and killed it. And then, and then I would see him later in town. I ran this top Hollywood. I was a doorman of this top, top celebrity driven uh uh, nightclub and he came in once or twice with like movie premieres would have their parties there or whatever and uh and uh, uh and so i saw him around town a few times and he remembered me and it, and it was cool man i i, I like that dude that was a fun show to work on yeah yeah we that's heard awesome. me like yeah, Brad that's, said, cool that's what uh that's what ken was telling us because you know he was on the show in the first couple of seasons and you know, then he worked on it as the as the music guy too, and nice. you know, he just he just always said like you know how the cast up there like how they were a family and whatnot, and it was one of the first uh, you know black shows on uh, WB mm -hmm. at the time because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what they were trying to push at the time. It's like you know you had uh, the Parenthood, the Wayans Brothers, uh, the Jamie Foxx show, so it was mm -hmm. cool that you had the opportunity to work on that show. Now I wanted to kind of go towards. Uh, different it's a movie but it's not horror related and it was drill bit taylor now you were in that right. movie and that was john hughes's last movie before he passed away so like how was it working on that i uh uh i got to work on it man and and uh that was when i was running that big nightclub right mm -hmm. so the director would come in and then this one security guard for the parking lot uh they had a security company for the parking lot told me that he went to the screening of it and it was i think he was working for the company that did the screening of it. Mm -hmm. So he's, he said that my part was the funniest part, right? Just... So listen, pardon me. No, you're good. So, so brother, uh, so I, the director would come in and I was rolling, man. I, I was making like, I got so cold at this spot. All the celebrities was coming. I, I, I averaged about $3,500 a week for 20 hours cash, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I and I was rolling with the blow too back then because that, that's how the celebrities would that I would be in the circle of that and do their after hour parties and all that. And uh, so my ego was out of control. I got so cold like it's a hundred dollars <laughs> for beer. it's a hundred dollars per dude to get in, mm -hmm. and I only touched hundreds. I didn't want no twenties and fifties and all that bullshit. It was hundreds only, right? Because uh -huh. I didn't want my I didn't want my pockets too puffy because my boss would come out and touch my pockets sometimes. So. Uh, so, so the director comes in and I'm like, yo, and he said, yeah, hey, Robert, da, 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 da. I was like, and then they had this dude, Big D, that's in the movie too. And he was big, heavy dude, six, eight, about 400 pounds. He, he was more closer with those dudes. You know, he, mm -hmm. he, he had a different vibe to me. He was more of a, uh, like he could, I don't want to say brown nose, but he know how to talk to people like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Socially. And I'm not like that style. So. I said, uh, uh, I said to the dude, I said, yeah, you know, I, I heard I'm going to have, you know, I was the funniest bodyguard you had in the play or something to the director, right? Mm -hmm. Man, next thing I know, I, I it comes out, I got cut out. I'm not in them. I get residuals uh, for it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he shut me down. And he didn't like the way I said it either. You know what I mean? I said it. And he was cool with Big D. He was, Big D would bite on him and they bite back and forth or whatever and go inside and, uh, uh, he didn't like my get down, and uh, I got shut down on that. I'm, I'm not in that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I, I still got the credit, but uh, my scene got cut out. 
Yeah, man, that always up because, um, you know, one of our actor friends, Renes Rivera, uh, he was just in the new Hugh Jackman movie. Uh, Try what was it called? Remember Reminiscent. Remembrance, right? Reminiscence. Yeah. Uh, Reminiscence. And uh -huh. he was in the movie, and like they they show him like in one of the scenes, but it's like you wouldn't know it was him, you know, unless uh, you knew it was him. And then he was just like he was supposed to be in the next scene, and then his scene got cut from the movie and it's just like you know he tells us all the time about like how uh he does these roles and then his scene gets cut like he was just in uh falcon and winter soldier and he was supposed to be in the first episode and the scene got cut but at least they made up for it by having him throughout the rest of the series but i know in hollywood it can suck when you have the best scene you know you hear good things and then that scene just gets removed from the movie because the director feels that uh I, you know, it, it's this political man and, and i didn't play the game that right you know mm -hmm. I, I made crucial mistakes not doing devil's rejects etc uh, uh in my career but one thing is for sure there's always time for a comeback so in the independent society, they have these non-union movies. Mm -hmm. And and I've been saying no to them for a minute, waiting on the big swing. So nowadays, the big swing, you get like, the average is like a day and a half to learn 10 pages. And that's not enough time for me because I'm not going to stop my get down with my daughters to do that. Yeah. So what I've elected to do, going to conventions for seven years and seeing how people roll it like i've seen some people progress because of independent films and i've seen an independent yeah. film called terrifier like hit the independent scene super hard mm -hmm. so i've done a couple where i'm in it for a minute but uh I've, so i I've, i let the union know i'm going to do that and i'm fight court now so i don't get to vote for who's going to be this and i never did anyway and then i don't get the free dvds anymore but uh, <laughs> uh I, I got this movie i'm going to drive called locked in i got um uh and I write the whole shit out, you know, oh, 50 nice. pages, 50 wow. that I'm in. My acting coach would be here in like 25 minutes. I'm going to give y'all 10 more. So okay. th this dude in Locked In, he, uh, uh, he's a dirty motherfucker, man. And uh, <laughs> re really, 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 really dirty. Like, like kidnapping and torture and rape and, yeah. and uh, uh, Drano and shit like that. So, Drano. Um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and I, love, I love it that you guys are laughing about it because I felt a little strange at first. And then so I've shared with, you know, some people that really like horror movies. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some gross ones, gross ones you know, the, uh, and what's it, internal? Inferno, uh, where they're in Green Inferno. Green Inferno. Oh my God! Oh yeah, that's yeah, Roth. That movie brutal. Oh my God! Right? Yes, sir. So, <laughs> so and people like it. So, uh, I'm I'm gonna kill this motherfucker, and uh, and I want to get something equal to uh, Terrifier because my main goal, like I was waiting on Black Widow and fight Spider Man and all that bullshit. Mm -hmm. I, I messed up. I had a couple swings. I messed them up. So I'm gonna just kind of back up a little bit if it is that and uh feed this horror fan base man and uh I, i'm super excited I'm, I'm super excited about it man i'm super excited about it since i'm since i'm in it in the game to win it anyway with the uh convention scene uh some were more popular than others the one i met you at was was wasn't the top but it wasn't the worst but mm -hmm. then some of them are really good man monster mania etc and you know mm -hmm. uh uh and so texas frightmare we have yeah, one out yeah. here uh, midsummer scream uh uh, where I get to cake up pretty good. So, uh, yeah, so that's the new angle, man. And and uh, when it hits, man, I definitely want to get do a shout out with you guys and get oh, another sure, interview man. and see what you think oh, about yeah. it, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah we definitely yeah. love to review it, man. And, you know, to piggyback off of what you were saying about Terrifier, because we had uh, David Howard Thornton and Jenna Canal up here, and both of them are awesome cat. people. Nice people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like how you said, that movie came out and it blew up, especially once it got on Netflix. So hopefully your movie gets on Netflix and it blows up because like you said, like the independent scene is where it's at, man. I mean, like it's a you good see, move to make, yeah, especially you see in it. horror. Mm -hmm. Very oh, good. go ahead, D. Go ahead, floor is No, I just, um, I just wanted to say that the horror scene is a great scene to be on. Um, it's something you worked in. 
And uh, independent films, man, that's one of the best to be in, as far as I'm concerned, because you just people find gems all the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been shout out to no, you, man. I, yeah. I've been saying no for a minute, you know, because of the whole SAG thing or whatever. But yeah, uh, 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 I, you know, I got two girls to feed, and and like yeah. I said, I'm, I'm I'm part of the the history of it with uh, correct with House of a Thousand Corpses, mm -hmm. and and I'm tired of saying no. So, yeah, hey, and I think I'm glad you stopped saying no, man. Because um, uh, hey, people find these horror movies. It, man. I, I worked last night, and this is this is an honest uh, this is an honest vibe I'm gonna share with y'all. So my last big piece was Westworld, right? Now I'm yeah. just this big minotaur, and I'm fighting the dude yeah. from X Men and and, and uh, Ed Harris and everything, and he was so cool. And I worked on it for a week and a day, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, uh. uh Anthony Hopkins was was in the lunchroom. I didn't go say yeah. anything to him. I'm not one of those dudes, but it was cool to even look at that dude in real life, yeah, right? Because he's yeah. a cold motherfucker, man. He's a mm -hmm. cold motherfucker. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, I love so, it. how do how do they treat you on those big ones? It's cool. You get the trailer. You know, you need this and that and the food and everything. It's just so cool, right? Mm -hmm. But on the indies, you, you don't get that. Yeah. So, but that's okay because I, I I don't need that, you know. But but the main thing that I like, and, and it, it feels the same, honestly, it feels the same way. The, the moments between action and cut, and you pretending like somebody else, mm -hmm. that that's that uh, that's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. Like it feels fun, and 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 you know. So basketball was cool. Motherfucker, blow the whistle. You jumping in this game time, and people <laughs> trying to get to you. Mm -hmm. That was a good sensation. And, and and acting is different, but you still have kind of the same level of intensity because you have to make your mind someone else. And usually I'm a mean guy, but I'm not really mean unless you fuck with me. So <laughs> you, 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 have that's right. like, you have to pretend like you're mean and, and it's just fun, man. It's it's fun. So so I I, I like it. I got tired of saying no because they, they ain't picking me enough. So <laughs> I'll, I'm ready to tear these independent things up for sure. Keep my body I can't, wait. I can't wait to see your work. Hey, hey, hey we can't support wait. everybody that we have up here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks because we like Olive Garden. When you here, we family. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> good, <laughs> right. good, good. But no, but good, I, good, I, I good. do like that. I mean, it's just like, you know, the independent scene in wrestling. It's like, it's uh, you're more hands on when it comes to stuff. And especially like with you going to the cons and everything and, you know, you're meeting all of your fans and then you could promote your work there. That's and right. mm -hmm. it's like some mm -hmm. like sometimes it's just like, you know, when it comes to like wrestling in the bigger leagues and stuff, you know, some of those guys, they only get to see the fans if they go to like a like a cricket wireless or something like that. And right, right. even with that, it's like they're on, you know, time constraints, whereas when you go to these cons or like on the indies and stuff, or if you come to an indie wrestling show, you know, you get to talk with the fans, take pictures with them. You know, uh, Rob, you already know. It's just like people come up to the table, you make money like that. And, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. Yeah, so, uh, so you you know, it, it's definitely financially a drop down because there's no residuals, mm -hmm. but you get to work more. And then I've got colleagues that, uh, that I, uh, I want to say, Maybe a Meyer, uh, Kane Hodder, and and, and mm -hmm. Bill Mosley, you know, yeah. and Legends. they and they do it, mm -hmm. and, and they Legends. do it right, and they're good dudes too. They're they, you know, we go out to eat, and Kane is super cool, Bill mm -hmm. is cool, and, and they do it, and and uh, uh, and and so like my friends that are a little bit closer to me, they're like. Dude, what the fuck you waiting on? I'm like, yeah, you, know, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to fight Spider Man. I don't give a fuck about all that. Uh -huh. And then, and then like, <laughs> so I got a buddy I buy water from. He's like, you know, a year later, he's like, man, dude. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's gonna happen. Then so it's been about three years, and he's like, he's like, dude. And I'm like, yeah, no, I know I'm gonna do. It. He's like, by time, come on, dude. That's come on. right. And, and, and 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 so, it, but it's still fun. It's just that you know, it, there's no residuals, but. Exactly. Uh, 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 but but it's still all good because you get that that thrill of of uh, of action and cut and, and mm -hmm. pretending like you're somebody else. So I'm I'm excited about it, man. My dude just texted me; he's leaving. He'll probably be here in ten minutes. But uh, yeah, we about to go uh, and wrap this thing I'm, up. I'm, I'm I'm excited learning this dude. It's called Locked In. We're going to Shlin Lari. She's fairly popular in the horror society. She's my mother. Uh, uh, one of my victims kind of slips away and, and grabs her and cuts her. So I get to cry and. Uh, uh, you know, so I go from one extreme being kind of pimpish and 
going into the strip joint that my buddy runs and, and grabbing one and, and then negotiating with this deal with this dude on the black web to, you know, Hell get some yeah. of my shit. I can't yeah, wait to see this. I can't wait to see it. Flip it over. Yeah, sound fire. 50 out, Lock 50 in, out 80 fellas. pages. Flip it over to where this motherfucker uh, slips away and slits and, and gets my mom and I'm crying and shit. So, uh, uh, and like you say, some one of them could be a gem and then that's one right. Of those big, one of those big shop motherfuckers see that shit and say, you know what? Who, who's this? Who's this creepy looking big ass bitch? Ah. <laughs> and we need and we need to put him in the next Spider Man movie. Let's, That's let's right. See, oh God, he got to fight Spider Man. <laughs> or, well, I'm over Marvel now, but let, let's see if he can do some Get Out or something. You know? Yeah. Hey, uh, never know. You can always yeah. you can always be in the next uh, Batman movie. You know what I'm saying? You never, never know. know. There, That's right. There, there's there's some huge. Uh, big budget horror things too you yeah, know what yes, I mean? there, so yeah it's it's just a huge community man the walking dead that would have been yep. good the first five years or so oh, that yeah. shit was oh, fucking yeah. heavy mm -hmm. so uh so yeah man i'm just super excited about feeding this uh independent fan base horror film film fan base mm -hmm. and uh life is good man life hey, is good right. it's all about so uh, yeah, we're not gonna keep you uh, that much longer. But before we let you go, D, he always has his final question. He, yeah, he and I only got guests. one for you, Rob. He got Give one. Give it up to me, dog. Give we, it up. Hey, it's 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 October, man. Hey, it's it's Christmas in October. So I'm gonna uh -huh. tell you like this: Do you have or did you have a favorite horror movie growing up that really stuck that stuck with you or like scares you? Anything? Good, good question, right? Yep, just one. Good question. Good question. I'm gonna tell you a few. In, in horror, in horror, I like it if it could be realistic, right? Mm -hmm. I, I like it. you see if you look at it and you think, "Damn!" So then, like you're walking in the fog and you think about that movie from the '70s, The Fog. Mm -hmm. and, right. Yeah, right. You like to ride my bike on the bike path a lot. It get foggy sometimes. I'm kind of looking around like this. a motherfucker. Yeah, right. come, you're only seeing like 15 feet away. Shit, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then so so my favorite one from when I was a little boy and it stuck with me and it's still an awesome movie. I think it came out in 78 and that would be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Brother. Yeah, the, classic. the, classic. the way that movie starts off, you know, mm -hmm. when I was a kid, I thought it was a documentary. I'm like, shit. So after that movie, I, I'm like, well, one thing is for sure. I really thought it was true. I'm not going to Texas. Like, I, <laughs> I'm not going to Lebanon, and I'm not going to Texas. Right. So uh, that's my favorite. And then, like, okay. And, and I, I say like Halloween. Like the first Halloween was the shit, the music mm -hmm. and everything. Classic. And, but I just didn't like the Another. end. When, well, I'm a classic, right? So I'm talking about movies when I was <laughs> yeah. a boy. Yeah. So I just didn't like the end when when the dude got up because if right. you hit him with a I think that was a, a 38. It sounded like a special mm -hmm. 38 spray. Like it had some meat to the to the shots when he shot him and he fell over the thing and went out, fell out on the ground like that. Yep. He wasn't supposed so when when they Friday the thirteenth, when they get up, when they take a couple bullets and keep moving, then it just it just you makes know, me not like it so much. Yeah, no, yeah, it kills it. Is that realism? I like for you? it. Yeah. The Walking Dead, I was immer immersed into it until they brought the tiger. Then I'm like, that well, oh, God damn yeah, it. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> uh, could have, I'm kind of thinking that zombies could be real and the special effect makeup was was a shit. And when Carol shot the girl, the twin girl oh, that, yeah, yeah. that uh -huh. was kind of, that's when I got hooked. My girlfriend was digging. I was like, whatever. Now I'm watching in the background, trying to play food with her to have fun with her. And then uh, uh, I saw that scene with Carol. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I gotta back this shit up and watch it from the very beginning. This is happy. Yeah. Uh, 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 so, so I, I, I do. And, and and what's that? What's the movie with Eleven? Uh, the show. Oh, Stranger uh, Things. Stranger Things is the shit. Mm -hmm. My little girls like that. I like that show. Uh, but um, yeah, I gotta say, my all-time favorite is is uh, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The first. Hell one. yeah. And the second one, I didn't appreciate. But doing conventions with Bill and everything and chop, 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 chop. I'm the like, second I gotta one's revisit. my favorite. Cause I gotta revisit, it's not right? even the same movie. It's yeah, not even yeah. like a follow-up. Uh, it's it's like they thing. redid the first one, but yeah. made it yeah. crazy. Hell yeah. And, and, and then they put a love story in it. And they put the love they story. Come, exactly, with the chainsaw <laughs> and uh, Caroline Williams. Uh -huh. So so I didn't understand the, the uh, comedy and horror right. and, and till corpses, because we have comedy in that. 
Yeah. And then, uh, uh, and then, so now I revisited uh, two, which is absolutely nothing to do with the first one, and, and I and I like it because because Chop Chop, he delivered. Mm. Yeah. And 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 uh, uh, Leatherface was pretty heavy on that one too. That was yeah. good. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Th- oh, yeah. Thank you. Well, guys, thank you. Mm-hmm. Man, it's, it's such a such a pleasure. You guys have a cool vibe, and uh, thanks for having that screen flickering to some of my best photos in the background. Hey, you're right. welcome, man. Hey, hey every photo is your best photo. Hey, every that's photo is right. your best hey. photo. Hey. That's so, right. Right. Well, with us wrapping this up, Robert, thank you so much again for joining us up here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Before we let you go, let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at. Hey, what's up, guys? Robert Mukes. I've got a robertmukes.com website. It's pretty cool. It's got some good shit on there. And then it's, <laughs> I, I keep it simple, man. Just my name, right? Robert, yep. uh, right. lower hashtag or whatever it is, and then Mukes. And that's the Instagram. And then my Facebook is just my name. So that's how you do it. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Ain't no special uh, hero killer or whore. whore <laughs> but I'm the hero. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, 610 killer it's, it's yeah, yeah right thank, good that would be a cool one yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks thank you so much Robert D let them know where they can find you at you can find me at rebellious double underscore D23 Instagram dot com Trav double yeah. underscore double, like double underscore that's, man. that's right man I'm hidden brother I'm, hey, I'm my hidden. man need, need my two. man needs business that's two one for the road one for the home you can find me on the Instagram at ZK Audio. You can find me on the Twitter at T R A V I O S Z K. Where are they going to find podcast number one hero at? Yeah. You'll find me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, at King Benji underscore Banks on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mr. Zuckerberg. Thank you again, Mr. Robert Allen Mukes, for joining us up here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Like I always say, keep that pinky up, stay positive. We'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Peace. Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel. Podcast, we got that too. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications. Thanks a lot to our patrons. And if you don't mind, join the Patreon. We'll be having new specials coming up soon.